Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, today's episode is all about eight simple steps to improve how accountable you are in midlife. So let's go. Welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle, with over a million downloads and counting. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach and midlife mentor. And as always, I really am so glad to be here with you. The topic I want to coach you on today is an encore episode, an encore topic, and it is a really popular one. It's about accountability. I know, everyone's favorite topic. Specifically, we're going to talk about how to be more accountable to yourself in midlife and why you might want to think about it. It is so important to really focus on how you want to show up in life, what you want, and how to get it. That's being intentional. But to be successful at all this, at following through, that is another piece of the puzzle. Following through. I think this can be a bigger deal in midlife because of the whole time is flying by kind of mindset that so many of us have. There really is a huge time sensitivity issue with us at our age. So using the time you have wisely really is a thing. The other thing is we're going to have a little fun with all of this. Yes, I said we'd have some fun even about accountability, even with this topic. So get ready. But just quick, speaking of time sensitivity, I want to make sure you know about how you can stop wasting valuable time feeling stuck and do something about it. It is so frustrating when you know you're meant for more, but are just spinning and wondering when something is going to change. That was me. I totally get it. But here's the thing. I can help you get unstuck. I'm right here and I can help you. But you just can't sit there waiting for something amazing to happen in your life. You have to do something. This is exactly why I created the Women in the Middle Academy, to help you get unstuck and excited about your life again. When we work together in the Academy, you will learn how to create a roadmap to a meaningful, regret-free next chapter. And you'll have fun doing it. So if you're ready to change your life and learn the skills to unstick yourself with some masterful coaching, a top-notch curriculum, an infusion of creativity, and a warm, fun, and awesome community of like-minded women, then let's talk about it. I would love to be able to help you get unstuck and happier than ever before. One thing's for sure. If you don't do something different, nothing will change. So if you want to make sure that you're on the path to the other side of stuck, take the first step and book your free no obligation momentum call at www.womeninthemiddleacademy.com and we'll chat and see if the academy is a good fit for you. I'm also excited to invite you to amplify your listening experience with the podcast by having more of a book club experience with all of the midlife stuff we're talking about here on the podcast. Every month, we focus on one episode. We share experiences and talk about how to apply what you learned to your actual life. You will get a workbook too to make it all super easy to do. And this is perfect for you when you're craving connecting with more women in the middle and you want to hang out with me. Just a little bit, super fun. Sometimes you even get to meet one of the podcast guests. Super affordable and fun. And you can quit whenever you want. How good is that? So to join the Women in the Middle Podcast Club, just go to susierosenstein.com and click the podcast tab and you'll see the podcast club button right there and away you go. And finally, I want to give you the heads up about something super exciting and new that I'll be announcing next week, and it is perfect for this time of year. I know you're going to love it. Okay, here we go. Let's dive into this extremely fun and important topic of how to be more accountable to yourself in midlife. I'd like to start by saying that this topic is one of the things my clients ask me about the most, so you're not alone. And when you think about it, it really comes down to a question that you ask yourself consciously or unconsciously, actually, but it goes like this. Will I do what I said I wanted to do? Or a slight variation on the theme, can I count on myself to do what I said I wanted to do? Did you hear the word that I chose so carefully? It was the word wanted. That's what we're talking about. Your priorities, the things you say that you want more of in your life, the daily tasks that you have on your big list, The goals that you have on your list, the things you say you want to do in the morning, for the week, for the month, for the year. 
I think you get what I'm saying. We all have things we want to do, and somewhere along the line, you prioritize them. And somewhere along the line, you have thoughts about the likelihood of doing the things that you believe you want. I may have to repeat that. Somewhere along the line, you have thoughts about the likelihood of doing the things that you believe you want. These thoughts affect the way you feel. So if you're thinking you may not do it, it's too hard, you're too busy, it all affects the way you show up for yourself immediately. And this really is the problem. And if you're a student of human behavior and why we humans do what we do, you've bumped up against this problem before. Why don't we do what we say we want to do? The answer is what I just mentioned. It's because of the way you're thinking about whatever it is. That's where things can break down. And you may or may not even know that there are these mental shenanigans going on up there. (laughs) Things break down with you, with a thought. It might even be a few thoughts, a mindset. Or it might be a question that you ask yourself, actually, which is a tiny bit different than a thought. If you're asking yourself a question like, how the heck am I ever going to follow through? For example, you will answer that question in your mind. You might think, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this thing, or there's no way I'm going to be able to follow through. And then that answer becomes the thought that's creating your emotional response. Because as I mentioned before, your thoughts create your feelings. The way you think is getting in the way of you giving yourself what you want. The best example I can think of is something you're likely to think yourself, and I hear this all the time in the academy. It goes like this. It's easier to be accountable to someone else. Like if you say yes to someone and they are expecting you to follow through, or it's easier to be accountable with an external event coming up, like if you have a vacation planned or a wedding coming up and you want to lose weight by that date, that might seem easier for you than if you just wanted to lose weight without a special event. So I think you can definitely identify with the contrast of your own accountability to others or like external events versus your accountability to yourself just because it's something you want. It's a thing for most of us, a thing. (laughs) And the problem begins with your thinking. Now, I've talked about this obstacle to your accountability in episode 32, which was about five years ago. It was in the first year. Uh, And also in a blog that's also a few years old, but this information is still good because this accountability stuff doesn't get old. So I will link to both of these, uh, the blog and the episode in the show notes. And from our coaching already just now, you might be able to see how the belief, your belief is so powerful. What we believe is really just a bunch of thoughts and it's incredibly powerful. Think about it. If you think it's harder to be accountable to yourself, how do you feel? You can kind of feel it already. There's a subtle disconnect from your commitment to yourself. It's kind of like a mini advance quit. Like just actually repeat that thought in your head. Wow, it's harder to be accountable to myself. Hmm, it's harder to be accountable to myself. (laughs) I know maybe you're not doing that while the podcast is actually in your ear, but the idea is... The way I like to think of it is you take your foot off the gas in terms of your motivation and focus. And when you think it will be easier for me to be accountable to X, you can pretty much feel yourself bolster up your commitment to yourself. You're stepping on the gas. It's a completely different emotional response. But for today, I wanted to dig into the other end of the problem, even though that's incredibly interesting. (laughs) I know that you've probably have more familiarity with it than what I want to talk to you about these eight steps. So the other end of the problem, the reflection and learning part about how accountable you are. There are some amazing opportunities here to work on improving this whole thing for yourself. And there's a great reason to do so because this is exactly how you get better at doing the things that you really want to do. Now, who doesn't want to get better at that? This is also the kind of thing that we do in the academy, and it is so incredibly helpful. So let's take a look at what we're really doing here, like at a high level, probably also while you're listening to the podcast. You're older than you used to be, and 
you also want to be wiser than you used to be. That makes sense. So to do that, you have to be more intentional about your life going forward so that you don't have regrets and so that you have way more fun. Now, doesn't that sound good? <laughs> That's really it in the nutshell. So you can make some plans and do some things, but that's not the whole part of the story because you also don't do some of the things that you wanted to do. So here are eight simple steps to take when you want to learn from your accountability mistakes so that you can make some improvements and create the life you really want. And you don't have to think about it as an accountability mistake, but like an accountability weakness or something that you want to get better or stronger at. So here are the eight steps. First, plan some things. <laughs> now, this sounds obvious, right? But this is where you start. You want to do some things or create some results in your life. So you got to have some goals. You got to have some plans. And I would advise that you write them down. Second, check in with yourself after a set period of time and notice your actual outcome. What happened? In the academy, we do this once a month, but you can do whatever makes sense to you. You actually sit down, look at your goal, and write down what happened or what didn't happen. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's say that I wanted to get up at 6.30 in the morning and do some stretching and some exercising. Um, and so that was the goal. And I want to look at it for a month. So my goal is to get up at 6.30 in the morning, which is earlier than I currently get up. I would write it down. That's planning some things. And then second, I want to check in with myself. So after a month, I want to look and see what happened. Oh, what do you know? I only did that two times <laughs> out of a whole month. And then I forgot that that was even my goal. So that is what checking in with yourself after a set period of time looks like and notice the actual outcome. So there's no point in fudging it because I want to learn from it. So I just notice what happened. I write it down, what happened or what didn't happen. Third, be curious about what actually happened and ask yourself why. Now, this step is usually skipped right over, but it's so important. How else are you going to learn anything about your shenanigans? So you want to ask yourself what helped. And you also want to ask yourself what didn't help. So with the example of getting up at 630, what helped me get up two mornings at 630 and do the exercises that I wanted to do? And then what didn't help? What didn't help me get up those other 18 times for the month? <laughs> what didn't help? So what helped was that I was motivated and I thought about it the night before. I even pulled my clothes out. What didn't help is when I was too tired and I just wasn't really focused on it. But really being too tired was a big part of it. Four, notice what you were thinking and how it related to what happened. Now, this may be a bit more challenging, but you actually have to think it through. It's easier to see what you're thinking when you're really specific. So try to think back to the exact moment when you were doing something or procrastinating or making excuses. So for me, I'm going to think back to when I was in bed, when I was actually in bed and what it, what it was like to hear the alarm. And I can see right away that I was thinking, I'm too tired and there's one more thought skipping today won't really matter. So I notice those two thoughts by going back to that exact moment. Number five, ask yourself if you like the reasons you didn't do what you wanted to do or didn't get the result that you wanted to get. Ah, now this is so good. Be honest with yourself too to really understand how the result you created for yourself is sitting with you. So when I ask myself if I like the reasons that I didn't get up in the morning and do those those exercises, 18 of the 20 possible mornings. <laughs> I don't like the reason. The reason was I was too tired. I could have easily gotten more sleep and I could have easily laid my clothes out. I could have uh, been more focused and reviewed things at night. It just seems like ugh, I'm not that, not that crazy of that reason. And then the other thing I noticed was that thought, it won't really matter if I skip today. And I can see that that was just uh, not great thinking. It wasn't useful at all. So I'm, I, I need to be very aware of that and I need to just embrace whether or not, like I need to own it. Do I like those reasons that I didn't do what I wanted to do? 
Number six, ask yourself what you would have to feel to follow through on your plans the next time. That is, if you weren't happy with your result. (laughs) So now you might be thrown off by this one a little bit, uh, but I'll give you a hint. The way you would have to feel is definitely going to be different than what you felt when you created the result that you got. And this is because the way that you feel is the reason behind the behavior that you did, your behavior. Your thoughts create your feelings and your feelings fuel what you do or what you don't do. So if you didn't do what you really wanted, it has to do with both your thoughts and then the feelings that they created. So what would I have to feel to follow through? That's number six. I would have to feel motivated. I would have to feel confident that I that this is a great plan for me. I would have to feel committed. So those are the kinds of feelings that are very different than the feeling I, I felt with the way I was thinking, which was disconnected from that commitment. Now, number seven, ask yourself what you would have to think to feel that way. So how would I have to think to feel motivated? That's what I have to get at. And getting to the thought you would have to think on purpose to create the results or outcomes that you really want is critical. It's intentional. And just like your feelings, if you didn't get the outcome you wanted, your thought will have to be tweaked. It wasn't working for you. It wasn't useful, at least with that goal, right? So you have to own that. So what would I have to think to feel committed or to feel motivated, like decide on the feeling and then ask, what would I have to think to feel that way? It would have to be something like, I love this plan. I made this plan on purpose. I'm excited about how I'm going to feel after I accomplish this goal. Whatever I decide today will matter. All of those ideas, and it really, it's what it is for you. But the way I like to really narrow down a thought is to repeat it a few times in my mind with my eyes closed. I like to say it out loud, actually. That's better. Uh, And then just notice that feeling. So I repeat it a few times out loud and then just notice the feeling. Does it work? Is that going to work for me? And you have to ask yourself, is the thought that you're coming up with going to work for you? And number eight, continue to plan ahead, including this new data and commit to your plan going forward. So you need to continue to plan ahead with the new data and you have to commit. So pay attention to the new thought that you identified and write it down. Remind yourself of what you want to think on purpose. And you can remind yourself however you like to remind yourself. It might be a sticky. It might be a reminder in your calendar. It might be a note on your mirror, or it might be a note that you put on your nightstand if you're looking at your alarm clock or like whatever it is for you. I think for me in this example, a note on the alarm clock would be helpful, which is usually my iPad, but I could actually stick a sticky on my alarm clock, which doesn't get used anymore, but it's still there. (laughs) Uh, And I do like putting reminders in my phone. And when you're putting a reminder of the actual thought, and then when it pops up, oh, I just feel like like I'm getting a virtual hug. It feels like a little bit of self-care when those thoughts pop up. And I like to put them at random times. So it's like a surprise to see that little reminder come up of the thought that you want to think on purpose about the goal that you want to accomplish. It works. These kinds of little strategies really do help. So let me repeat those eight steps for you. They're simple, but important. So number one, plan some things. Number two, Check in with yourself after a set period of time and notice your actual outcome. Number three, be curious about what actually happened and ask yourself why. Number four, notice what you were thinking and how it related to what happened. Number five, ask yourself if you like the reasons you didn't do what you wanted to do or didn't get the result that you wanted to get. Number six, ask yourself what you would have to feel to follow through on your plans the next time. And number seven, ask yourself what you would have to think to feel that way. And number eight, continue to plan ahead, include what you learned, and commit to your plan going forward. So, and write it down. There you have it. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? To actually reflect on what happened, why it happened, and what changes you can make to help yourself create what you want 
It's a brilliant plan for your accountability, your personal growth and development, and your next chapter in general. Now, a few last reminders, just two actually. That's a couple. (laughs) As you're probably aware, support can be incredibly helpful when it comes to accountability. This is one of the main reasons that people love working together and being together in the Women in the Middle Academy. We have monthly coaching calls about accountability specifically. So if you would like to learn more about how all of this works, please book your momentum call with me and I'll tell you the details. Just go to www.womeninthemiddleacademy.com. The system works and it's super fun and incredibly supportive. Also, remember what we talked about near the beginning of this episode. Even your general mindset about how accountable you are and how accountable you are capable of being is a thought. Thoughts can change. If you always think you're not that great at being accountable to yourself, how do you think that that kind of thinking will impact your life? If you think this way, you will likely perpetuate this reality for yourself. That's not what you want. So really work on increasing your awareness of your thinking, especially about accountability. Now, if this is you, I wonder if you can be open to the idea that you're getting better at accountability. Can you be open to that? That's a good little baby step. I know you probably don't want to think, oh, I'm a rock star at at accountability. (laughs) Maybe that's not you just yet. But if you are the type that is really wanting to work on this some more, you'll start increasing your awareness and you really do want to be more reliable um, when it comes to your own goals. So can you think something like this? I can be open to the idea that I'm getting better at accountability. I just think that's a beautiful baby step and it just opens the door just a little bit at this idea of improvement. And this would be way more useful for you, a way better way to think about your amazing self. And I know that your amazing self (laughs) wants to do a lot of cool things. So let's increase the likelihood that it's going to happen. Accountability can be thought of as a skill and you, my friend, can get better and better at it, especially with increased awareness of what you're thinking. That's it for this episode. Now, as you know, this podcast is all about how to love your life again after 50. It's really all about coaching you to be more intentional and to incorporate mindfulness into your life as a regular practice. This is how you put yourself on your agenda, my friend. My focus as your midlife coach is to help you get unstuck, clear, and focused on your current values and priorities so you don't have regrets. I can help you create the success you're looking for. I would love to be able to help you get unstuck and happier and more fulfilled than ever before. So go ahead and book your momentum call at www.womeninthemiddleacademy.com and we will chat. I'm also excited to invite you to download a copy of Top 10 Tips to Reimagine Your Life After 50. It's free and it's super useful when you're looking for some journal prompts to start thinking about who you are, what you want, and what is really possible. So head over to www.susierosenstein.com forward slash 10 questions. And it's the number 10, one zero questions. And finally, for show notes and links, head over to www.susierosenstein.com and click the podcast tab and look for episode 357. You'll see links there for the new show too, Women in the Middle Entrepreneurs. Are you listening yet? I hope so. There's lots of great stuff there. Thanks so much for listening. It's time for you to put yourself first, one thought at a time. I'm Susie Rosenstein, and I'll talk to you next week. Okay.